The Ned Rig is arguably one of the best bass fishing lures of all time because it catches fish no matter what the conditions. Anytime I'm struggling, I can always pull a Ned Rig out and get a bite. So in today's video, we're gonna go through a bunch of tricks to help you catch more fish on a Ned Rig, and we're gonna talk about a bunch of different pieces of the Ned Rig in depth. So starting off, we're gonna talk about your gear, break down everything you need from rod, reel, line, bait, everything like that. From there, we'll be moving to how and where to fish this bait. So we're gonna go out on the water, we're gonna show you different types of areas I like to fish this bait, different retrieves that I like, depending upon the time of year, what the fish are doing, um, and try and catch some fish that way. And and then at the end of today's video, I'm gonna break down one of my favorite tricks to catch a lot more fish on the Ned Rig. It's a two-fold approach in the early spring like this that helps me catch a bunch of fish, so stay tuned. Let's get right into it. You'll be catching more fish on a Ned Rig, guaranteed by the end of today's video. We're gonna start with gear. And to start with gear, we're gonna go ahead and rig up an entire new red Ned Rig from scratch. I'm gonna take my whole leader off here. I'm gonna show you everything I do when I rig up a Ned Rig so that you can catch a lot more fish. Where did I just put my scissors? I swear scissors are the easiest thing to lose when you're fishing. Scissors, start with gear, you need scissors. Unless you have really strong teeth that you can cut through braid. But all jokes aside, this is my basic Ned Rig setup. I've been fishing this for years. Pretty much use this same setup for about 90% of my finesse fishing. I get just a regular spinning rod. This is the Icon spinning rod from Cashin. This is the seven foot medium fast action. This is the Ned Rig rod specifically, but you don't have to have a specific Ned Rig rod. Just something that has that fast action tip so you can make good casts and feel what's going on down there, but still has some backbone because you are fishing a single hook bait. And one of the tricks we're gonna talk about here shortly, you're gonna need a little bit of that backbone to get a good hook set. That's the rod that I like to use. And then I put a 2500 size Shimano Sedona on there. Just a basic spinning reel. The most important thing is your drag. So you can see how smooth that is. That's very important because you're a lot of times you're going to be fishing light line with this. So the smoother the drag, the better. You don't want something that's too jerky. I'm willing to pay a little bit more for a reel if it has a smooth drag on it, just because I know it'll land me more fish at the end of the day. Because if you get a small mouth up next to the boat and it decides to run and you have a sticky drag, you're breaking that fish off most of the time. That's very important. And then almost all my finesse fishing, you guys know, I love to fish the lime green braid. So I have suffix 832 on there, lime green color, and it's 50 15 pound test. That's basically my main line on all of my spinning rods. Somewhere in that 10 to 15 pound range for your braid is perfect. It's gonna allow you to tie perfect leader knots, have some abrasion resistance up here, but more importantly, this is your strike indicator. And we're gonna talk all about that as we fish today. I've talked about it in wacky rig videos, but this is the most important thing to get more bites or more importantly, to land more fish because you know when you get bites. The next thing we're gonna need is a spool of leader line. So I have Suffolk's advanced fluorocarbon here. This is eight pound test. I carry six, eight, 10 today. Water's a little bit stained. There's some big fish in this lake and we're gonna be fishing around some docks. So I'm gonna go up to eight pound. I could even go to 10 pound, but they have been a little finicky today. So I'm gonna go with the eight pound for today. And then here's what I do for all my leader knots. I know people ask me all the time, we're gonna show you an actual leader knot today. I keep this side in my mouth and I will undo the line from the spool and I'll lay out a pretty big section, but I don't cut it off from the spool. Then what I'll do, I'm tying, it's called an Alberto knot. I'll loop it back on itself like that. So you have the tag and your main line. I'll loop it back so I have a loop. I come up from the bottom with my main line and then I will wrap seven times around the tag and the main line going down the line. So one, two, three. I use my mouth for this usually, it's a lot quicker. Four, five, six, and seven. So you get seven wraps that come down the line here. Then I will pinch it at this end and then I will come back up seven more times this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's usually a lot faster going that way because you already have tension on the line. So you'll wrap seven this way, seven back on itself this way, and you have your main line coming up from the bottom going out the top. Here is the key right here to make sure this knot does not come undone. You match the way that it goes in. If it's coming from the bottom and going out the top, your line has to go back down through the top and out the bottom. If you reverse it, it can come undone. But if you match which way it's going, if it flips over while you're doing it and somehow your line's going from the top through the bottom, 
go through the bottom to the top, just match whichever direction it's going and you'll be good to go. And then I will slowly cinch that up until I get it just tight enough. Wet that to make sure it cinches good. I'll pull everything together. I'll pull all four tags till I get it tight. And then once I get it tight enough where that line cinches on that floor carbon, I'll drop my two actual tag ends and pull my main line and my leader line until it's cinched up and that will not come off. You're good to go. I'll cut my tag ends off here. So let's get those cut off. Tag ends are cut off now. I have my leader knot right there that you can see. I still have it tied to the leader spool. Here's what I do. I pull off a wingspan and then a second wingspan. That's how I measure pretty much all my leaders. My wingspan's probably about six foot. So I get somewhere around like 12, maybe a little extra every time I do that technique. Now I have a box full of Ned Rig heads here, whole bunch of different sizes. I pour them myself. When I'm using a Ned Rig, I try to pick the lightest weight I can get away with so that it doesn't dig into the bottom. As long as you can feel the bottom, that's the light weight that you want to go with. If you're getting snagged in a bunch of rocks and everything every time you're dragging it, go lighter, you'll still be able to drag in the rocks and it'll go over the top better rather than drop down in the holes and get snagged. If you're fishing in a little bit of wind or some deeper water and you're throwing your Ned Rig out there and you cannot feel the bottom, go with a heavier one. That's basically how I pick it, but I keep all the sizes. So I have everything from a 1 16th here up to a 1 quarter ounce, every size in between. Sometimes that small weight adjustment can really make a difference and catch you more fish. This is about a 3 16th here today, and I'm gonna go ahead and just tie this on with a Palomar knot. We're all tied up now. Last thing you need is a bait. So there's two baits that I like to fish. I've always fished the Z-Man TRD. You guys know I have. I'm not gonna lie to you and say I don't use it. I use that bait 100%. It's a great bait. Second option here, which is the Six cents boost in Ned. I've just started using these because they're brand new. So I, to be honest, I've fished a Ned rig longer than these have been out. So I have used the TRD. Great bait to use. If you like it, go ahead with it. I've been using the Boosa Neds recently because I do work with Sixth Sense. If you want to support the channel at all, go ahead down below. I'll leave the link for everything in the description. But if you want any of the Sixth Sense baits, you can use my code Quince and you'll save 10% off your order at checkout. The Boosa Ned has been excellent as well. It has a meaty head to hold the bait up on there and then it has a little quivering tail on the end. Something just a little bit different than the TRD. Both of them do float up on the bottom. I have tested this one. I caught 22 pounds on this bait last week. I'll link that video at the end of today's video if you want to see that. Other than that though, I really haven't tested any other Ned Rig baits. I always stuck with this one when it first came out. They were the ones that released the Ned Rig in the first place and brought it to market. And that's the one that I got started with and I caught so many fish with it. There's no reason to change if it doesn't, if it's not broken. All we really have to do to put this guy on here, you just line it up like you would any other bait. You're putting it on a jig head. You turn it around the hook bend there pop it out and then I push it up to my keeper here which is a little bit messed up but that's okay push it over my keeper stick the keeper into the bait and we got us a Ned Rig now we're gonna go see if we can catch some big fish we're gonna do a couple different things today on how we're gonna approach these fish there are fish that are not spawning they're around the docks they're just really tough to catch so a Ned Rig could be a perfect way to do that and we'll show you how to fish it doing that different retrieve methods that I like to do and then there's beds everywhere with big fish on it and the Ned Rig is probably one of the best sight fishing lures of all time. Let's get up on the front deck, let's get to fishing, see what we can catch. So the first thing that I like to do with my Ned Rig, basically I target cast with this as best I can. If I know there's areas that I can target cast, this lake full of docks, full of grass. If I were fishing on a river, I'd look for points or current breaks, but I'll basically cast it out there and I'll watch my line. I use that lime green braid to make sure my bait's sinking towards the bottom. When I see it lay slack on the bottom, there's a couple things that I'll do depending on how I want to retrieve it. I'll reel up my slack and I'll lift up to see if there's a fish on there. I'll lay it back down so I make sure my line lays slack again and I'll reel up till I'm about nine o'clock and I'll lift up till about 11. I don't want to get too high over my head like this because then if you catch a fish, you got to reel up all that slack and then get a hook set. So I try to keep my rod right here in front of me between like nine and 11. That's like the place to be. So the basic retrieve is just that simple pull and stop. That's like the best way to do it from what I've found. So if you're fishing rivers, current, stuff like that, easiest way is to pull it and let it lay back down on the bottom. Pull it forward a little bit more and lay back down on the bottom. Now, if you have some fish that are a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more willing to chase, you can cast it out there like that. Let that thing sink down to the bottom. Reel up your slack. I'll still do 
where I just pull to see if there's anything there. If there's nothing there, you can go ahead and kind of jig it a little bit. So I'll kind of hop it just to give it a little bit different action. Sometimes this is if the fish are in just a little bit more of a chasing mood. The other thing the Ned Rig is incredible at is actually skipping if you use the right size head. This one's probably a little bit too heavy, but I'll actually skip it under these docks way into the shade sometimes just to see if there's any bigger fish that are hanging out in the shade that might be willing to bite the Ned Rig that might not come out in the open to actually bite it. Now the other thing that I'm doing, which this is going to catch you a lot more fish when they're spawning, you'll see light spots and dark spots as you go around. And a lot of times these fish get a lot of pressure because everybody knows they're on beds. If you can throw your bait to them before they know they're there, just like when you're dock fishing, a lot of times you can catch these fish. So what I'm actually doing is I'm keeping my eyes open for any light or dark spot and you'll watch me do it throughout today's video. But if I see like, say I saw a light spot like right over here next to this dock, I'd pitch my bait in there from a distance and I'd just let it sit there for a second and see if that fish would pick it up and swim it off the bed. There wasn't one there, um, but that's the way that I'm gonna approach this. Look at that. I pitched at one of those light spots and I caught me a fish. It only took me all day. There we go, not a big one. Literally within 10 casts of switching to the Ned Rig after filming that other video all day. And we already got a fish in the boat. Not a bad one, throw him back. We'll see if we can get some bigger ones. That was a little large mouth. The Ned Rig catches all species of bass. I don't, small mouth, spotted bass, large mouth. It really does not matter. There's a little light spot right there with a small mouth on it. See if we can get her to bite. There we go, got her. Literally, it's like they've never seen it before. You pitch it in on a bed and they will grab it. I could try any other bait in there and you'd have to work those fish to get them to bite, but you throw that Ned Rig in there and it doesn't matter, large mouth or small mouth, they'll go over and grab it. That one was on a bed. Didn't really get to sight fish it much. I kind of just pitched it on the light spot of the bed and then basically she did the rest. Got her. And she's large. She's large. She's large. Oh. Oh. It's a good one. Oh, there's a big one chasing it too. Uh-oh, there she goes, she's off alrighty. Look at that one. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking all about how to fish the Ned Rig and catching more fish with it. If you did and you wanna see another Ned Rig video, check this one out right here. I break down even more about how to catch fish with the Ned Rig. We're gonna let her go. Hit the like button down below and the subscribe if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next one.